Episodic games frighten me. Not just because you're buying the experience in parts, but because the best laid schemes of mice and gamers oft go awry. We've seen them enjoy success from Dot Hack to The Walking Dead, but on occasion something goes completely wrong and we get left hanging. In some cases, like Sonic 4, that's for the better. In others, like Shining Force 3, it leaves me eternally wanting. So it makes me feel weird about covering Dysfunctional Systems Episode 1, as, from all current indications, there may not be any more. Such is the harsh economic reality of building a sound novel from scratch and releasing it to a world that didn't know what to make of it. To say nothing of trying to discuss it intelligently, or finding footage that isn't just text on some character sprites. Following in the footsteps of Chunsoft's early offerings like Otogiriso and Kamae Tachi no Yoru and their better known Zero Escape series, dysfunctional systems consist mostly of, well, text, pretty backgrounds, character sprites, and more text. Fortunately, befitting its lineage, this is supported by a pretty awesome soundtrack and atmospheric sound effects. It details the education of one Winter Harrison, age 14, and her training to become a mediator. Not one of those weird Final Fantasy Tactics mediators going all Carl Sagan and dropping faith scores by billions and billions, but a specially trained negotiator from a far-flung utopian society tasked with reducing chaos wherever it rears its ugly head. How do you reduce chaos? Well, that's never really detailed, but it might involve a carefully placed assassination. That's your mentor Cyrus trying to bring his own preferred style of diplomacy to the table. Are you just going to stand there and let him go through at it? Well, that very question drives most of the experience. I still hesitate to say game, as realistically you're going to find an auto advance speed for the text that feels comfortable to you, you're going to go grab a snack, and take in the story without having to touch a thing. Until an option presents itself, and even then there aren't many options. Though each branch of the story is very well fleshed out. I tried a few of them and... Though I ended up in much the same place, the effects on Winter and Cyrus were very different. The second episode intends to tailor itself to the events of the first, regardless of the path you chose, so in essence, every ending is a canon ending. That's awfully ambitious. I hope it actually happens. I'm not going to pretend that sound novel games of this type are going to have universal appeal. We're barely talking about a game here. But from the art style to the well-polished UI to the bevy of unlockable bonus content available, yes, including a jukebox so you can hear even more of the soundtrack, there's a lot to like about dysfunctional systems. Heck, they've been making sitcoms like this for generations now. If you're still on the fence, you can pick up Jupiter's Knot, a freeware precursor to this style of experience, for free on Dischan's website. Just, if you're like me, and you feel uncomfortable with the amount of creeping on this girl, who is stated in the damn game to be 14, don't dig too far in the art gallery. The rest of the experience really, really didn't deserve that.